Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today, we'll be working with charcoal. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and use your oldest, rattiest kneaded eraser. This charcoal has a tendency to mess up a kneaded eraser. And uh, a piece of charcoal, anything you'd like. There are several different types of charcoal. Um, you can use uh, stick charcoal that unravels. You can use um, charcoal pencils. Uh, you'll need a cotton swab for blending. And let's get started. I appreciate you drawing with me. I really do. This is one of the great joys of my life. So thanks for being here. We may or may not use this eraser, uh, but it's good to have it standing by. This one's a little more aggressive than your needed eraser. So sometimes you might need a little aggressive eraser. And that I love these vinyl erasers for that. So I'm just going to set that aside. I'm going to set my charcoal aside, my cotton swab. And uh, we're going to start out with our number two pencil. Just because it's easier to get your proportions and things with that. You probably noticed I, I chose a lot of pictures with people smiling. I want to show you how to do teeth. Because most of the time, people will draw each individual tooth, and then it looks like they're gapped or that they've got cavities or something. I'm going to show you how to draw teeth really easy uh, using this little technique. The other thing is hair. A lot of people kind of have a hard time with hair. And so I'm going to show you how to do hair as well. So what we want to do is figure out where everything goes. And the first thing is you need to leave a, quite a bit of space for his hair. So right up at the top, you just want to say, okay, if his head comes up here, his hair is going to take up most of that up there. And then you've also got some hair down in here. So you want to leave yourself a pretty good amount of space for the hair. His head's going to kind of come down into here. So you just go ahead and make an egg shape. That represents the size of his head from his cranium to his chin. And again, leave yourself plenty of space up at the top for his hair. I might want to leave more space up there. Maybe that much. So just this kind of egg shape. If that's the top of his head, and that's the bottom, then right in the middle is where his eyes go. And you can, you can kind of use your fingers like calipers and just kind of determine where that, that center is. Remember to draw lightly with the side of your pencil because everything we draw with this pencil can easily be erased. And if you want, you can kind of find the center of that line. So here's, here's my line. Here's my edge. And again, you can use your pencil if you'd like to find the center. Whatever is easiest for you. So then what I'm going to do is divide that space in half. There's half of that. Half of that. And I want to divide this space from this line to the chin. I want to divide that in half. That is not his nose, by the way. That's about his, between his nose and his upper lip. Now, right about where that center line is, if you make kind of a circle towards the middle of the face, you could even have that circle maybe even touching that. So if this was an angle, have that circle right in that area right there. That circle represents his iris. Now, his eyes are offset just a little bit. He's looking off to our right. But we can adjust that later. Right now, we're just getting proportions. And if you take the between the halfway mark and this mark, and you, you do a little, little mark there, that's his tear duct. And between here and there, you make a little mark. That's that's kind of the tear duct area. And then I'm just going to do this arch right there. And I want to cut off the top of that little circle I drew. I'm just going to cut off that the top of that circle. Because your iris is cut off. Whenever you smile, it pushes your cheeks up into your eye. And that bottom edge is, is almost level. Not quite. It has a, a bit of a an arch to it, but it's almost flat. If you were to measure one eye, 
compare it to the other eye, and they should be about the same length. Also, you should have one eye in between the eyes. So you have one eye here, one eye in the middle, and one eye over here. That'll give you some pretty good proportions for the eyes. And again, we'll have to adjust it. Everybody's slightly different. Now, this little halfway mark here, if you go up just a little bit and make a little, a little curve like that, that represents the the tip of his nose or the bottom of his nose. And if you come down just a little bit, that represents his top lip. So that's where that philtrum is. And you can make a little divot or you could just put a little, little curve there to say that's, that's where that goes. That'll be his top lip. And again, we'll adjust it up and down. If you go straight down from the eye, the tear duct, that's where his nostril goes. So you can make just a little mark right there. Come straight down. Just make a little mark. That's, that's his nose. This one over here, straight down. Make a little mark. That's his nose. These are your basic proportions. Now, if I go down from the middle of the eye, the inside middle of the eye, I come straight down, make a little mark. That's where the edge of the mouth is. Same thing here. Take the eye up just the inside middle of the eye and make a little mark. That's how wide his mouth is. I'm just going to do this little curve for the mouth. I'm going to start from the, the side here, just do a little curve. I'll have to adjust it. Uh, one of his lips curves up a little bit more than the other. That was kind of a trademark for Elvis Presley. And then he's got teeth. And all you got to do for the teeth is just come inside a little bit. There's a, a little corner of his mouth right there. A little corner of his mouth over here. And you just kind of come inside and do this little arch for his teeth. There's his teeth. And then his bottom lip is just this little shadow. Very light little shadow. I'm going to do this little curve for his chin down here somewhere. And I might have to adjust that a little bit. But if you come straight out from his mouth, there's a curve right there for his chin. I'll just drop that down in there. Straight out here, a curve right here. And then I'm just going to do my a little bit of shading with my pencil. A little bit over the top of his eye. There's that little, uh, his eyelid as it fits into his, his eye there, his eye socket. It's like a double little line. Then eyebrows, just, just shade them in. The shape of the eyebrow, that's all you need. And then I'm going to do his hair and his hair is very dark um, so I'm just going to do a whole mass of darkness with the side of my pencil and and I can adjust this I can make it bigger or smaller however I want to but this is going to help me get proportions as well Try to get that mass of hair. It doesn't have to be even, 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 even. You want the shape of it. That's what's important. And it's it's ever so light. So anything here can be erased. And if, if it's not right, just take your kneaded eraser and see if you can make it right.
Now what I'm going to do is just kind of start adjusting things. I can see the lobe of his ear kind of corresponds to the bridge of his nose there. So I'm just going to throw that in as a shape. No line around things. So these edges are shapes of shadows, not lines. And you can always adjust these. Everything here can be erased. This is why this is so sweet to do it this way. Eventually you'll get to the point where you don't, you just draw direct with your charcoal. But here we've got an, an option. Not so difficult. All that stuff can easily be erased. So all his, the little value that goes down his chin. And if you look at his chin, his chin is like a sphere. You can see a reflected light, cast shadow on his neck, highlight, light side, shadow edge, shadow core. It's all there. Same thing with his nose. So as I, as I draw down his, the bridge of his nose, don't use line down there, okay? A lot of this happens very, very quickly, too. So sometimes the faster you draw, the better. You want to always push yourself anyway. So here's the shadow around his nose. This is the cast shadow. So you think of the nose like a sphere. And you've got your little cast shadow. And if you want to make it look like Elvis Presley, just take that, that left side of his lip, his, his left side, our right side, just push it up just a little bit. Oh, we're not going to worry about teeth right now. That will come later on. We're just about ready for charcoal. Look at your proportions and see if that doesn't look just right. No detail, just proportions. Just look where the eyes are, where the nose is, where the mouth is. If you're seeing detail in mine, I'm really just putting in shapes of darkness. Again, everything here can easily be erased, so just keep adjusting until you're happy with it. Last thing to do before we get into the charcoal is take your kneaded eraser and just get rid of anything that you feel like you need. Maybe clean up some edges. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my charcoal and um, I'm going to just zoom into this a little bit. Starting out with the eyes, I'm going to do that top eyelid first by this just, just this little shape. Look at the shape of the eyes. And don't worry about individual eyelashes. Just do the shape of them. Usually it's a little darker on the outside or a little thicker on the outside, thinner on the inside. One thing you have to do with charcoal is be very uh, gentle with it. I'm going to do his little eyelashes here too, just a little bit, just a little darkness right there. Now I'm ready for his eye iris part. And since the bottom part of his iris and the top part of his iris are cut off, all we need is a little bracket. You need one right there, one little bracket there, a little bit larger one on the inside. And just leave that little spot at the bottom. Then he's got a little shine in his eye. 
So I'm going to just kind of pick out that shine with a little half moon, half circle. Then put the, uh, the pupil in there so it touches that top eyelid. It almost looks like a little apple core because it got two little highlights in there. And some things I know about the eye, the eye is darker up at the top because of the eyelashes. It's kind of a little shade there, right there. So I'm going to just darken that up at the top, a little bit over on this side, and I'm going to leave it light at the bottom. As I blend that, that little bit of light has reflected light in there from his cheek and his nose. It bounces up into his eye there, so it's going to be lighter at the bottom. While I'm at it, I might as well do his eyebrows. So I'm just going to do these little flecky lines back and forth and back and forth. These little flecky lines. You have some going one way, some going the other. You can almost just kind of zigzag through them, but his eyebrows were very iconographic as well. And right above his eye on the outside was a little darker. So I'm just going to add a little bit of value to it right there. And then I'll blend all that. And it should, should come out okay. Same thing over here by the bridge of the nose. Just going to put in some uh, charcoal right there. Again, I should blend that okay. On the outside of his eye, there's a little bit of shadow right there. And his eye, where it creases, where his eyelid is, has a little wrinkle right there. I'm just going to ever so lightly put that in with the edge of my pencil. And at this point, I can do little circles. I can go back and forth. But I'm just barely touching the paper. Not really putting much pressure down there at all. You can always add more later. When in doubt, leave it out. You can always add more later. So I'm going to do the same thing with that other eye. And again, you can start with the eyebrow if you want. You can, I don't know, I always get asked, where do you start? It's like I always start with the eye. Because that, to me, is an important place. And I have this kind of weird idea that my drawings have a life to them, that they kind of come alive. And if they get their eyes, then they watch you do it. And they watch you do it right. It's kind of like Pygmalion. You know who Pygmalion was? Isn't it like, he's some kind of like, Greek yeah, well, he was an artist, a Greek artist. He did a sculpture of a, a female sculpture, and he fell in love with his sculpture. I know, that's weird. Aphrodite had pity on him and made the sculpture come alive. I feel like this eye is slightly off over here, so as I draw it, I'm going to adjust it just a little bit. And the rest of this we can do with our cotton swab, which cotton swabs are pretty cool this way. You can take your cotton swab and you can go in there and just start blending some things. You can blend his eyebrows. That'll pick up some of the charcoal above his eyebrow. Just ever so lightly, just blend it. Don't press too hard. If you have to press hard because you're not getting any Charcoal needs, means you need more charcoal on there. So just lay a little bit more charcoal in there. 
Here's his eye. I'm going to blend from the top down because I want the bottom of his eye to be a little lighter than the top. And you can see where I took out my highlight in his eye. You think, oh, shucks, I got, I got rid of the highlight. You just take your kneaded eraser, should be able to touch it, bring that highlight back out. So if you do accidentally get in there and touch that highlight, touch it with your kneaded eraser. And it should bring it back out, most of it. So those light tones that are really hard to get with, well, even hard to get with uh, graphite, a lot easier to get with that cotton swab. Just nice and very soft. You can always add more later. A little wrinkle under his eye. You can get that with the cotton swab. And again, right under his eye, you want it to stay nice and light. And if you go too far, just take your kneaded eraser, dab that just a little bit. Look at the whites of his eye, too. They're not white. Just a little bit, just very soft with your cotton swab. Like I say, if you if you took out the light too much, just take your kneaded eraser, go back into it. So I've got I've took out a little bit too much. I'm just gonna grab that a little bit of light there. And the last thing you do is uh, eyelashes. So then you take the tip of your pencil. I think we went over eyelashes, didn't we? Just remember those on the side kind of curve out, down and out like this. Then these curve up. The closer you get to the middle of the eye, the more up curve you got to them. You don't need too many. Just a few here and there. I think sometimes I think we add a little too many, then they look kind of silly. And then just very lightly, whatever needs to happen, but that'll give you a nice, realistic looking eye. Oh, by the way, when you're drawing too, you're going to look at it and think it's dark enough now. But then when you get drawing around it, it won't look dark enough, so you'll have to add more. That's common. Now we're going to do the nose. And the nose is where we don't see the nostril very well. That, that makes it a little easier to do. So here's the cast shadow that goes around the nostril, under the nose a little bit. Remember, it's the shape of a nostril of dark and light. Don't have to draw a little hole or anything. And most of that can be done with the cotton swab. So once you pull out some of that, you can put in that core shadow that's around that, up the nostril. There's a little highlight right there on the tip of the nose. You can throw that in with your kneaded eraser.
When you're doing the mouth, remember the teeth, you're not drawing the teeth in. We're going to shade those in with the cotton swab. You do want to do the corners of the mouth that are very dark. So if you, if you, you can throw in just a little bit of the corners of the mouth. Because they're going to be fairly dark. And then the teeth, just pick out those little triangles of darkness in between the teeth. And you can start like with the center tooth. Don't draw the teeth themselves, just the edges. And if you can see that little bit of gum in there, you can do that with your your pencil, and just a little triangle there. And then you kind of go over to the next tooth, and there's a little triangle over there. Very light, very, very soft. Another one. Another one. One over here. One right there. And that top lip, and even the bottom lip, is, is going to be done with your cotton swab. Don't draw a line around those lips. Just a little shadow under that bottom lip. So when you get to that point, you're ready to do the teeth themselves. All you do is you take your cotton swab. If you can find a cleaner spot or the other side that's not got anything on it, and you just go straight down from the top to the bottom. And then we just fix that with the kneaded eraser. That's, that's how you do teeth. Piece of cake. Easiest teeth you've ever drawn. And the top lip. I'm just going to grab some of this from the side here where his corner of his mouth is. And just move it out over the, to the top. Usually the side of your mouth, the side of your teeth are a little, uh, little darker. So I'm just going to darken in some of these little edges on the side there, just a little. And you can use your cotton swab to get his lips. There's even little striations sometimes that you can get in there. If you see those little striations, just use your cotton swab, and then you can come back in with your kneaded eraser, touch those, and get them a little sharper. I need some more graph or some more charcoal because I want to do some in his cheeks and up here, and I, I don't have much charcoal to choose from. So I'm going to do his hair just to give me charcoal. So I'm just going to take my charcoal, the side of my 
my pencil like this. I'm just going to do these little shapes. I'm trying to figure out which direction his hair flows. So I'm going to try to go in the direction his hair flows. You got a little tuft of hair coming out here. Do something like that. If it's lighter, just leave it out. There's little certain areas that kind of look a little lighter. You just leave them out. What's important are your edges. So, for example, I can just scribble, 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 scribble through this. This is all dark. Nobody sees what's going on in there anyway. And then, but it's the edges that I need. So as, as soon as it comes in close to the head, I just take these little lines and go back and forth. So those edges are soft. I don't want a strong edge right there. Then I can take that and manipulate it with my cotton swab. There's a couple little little flicks of hair on the outside. So if you just scribble in the darkness there, and then on the outside, you can just do little flicks of, like this, little just, you know, scribble, 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 and then the outside gets a little flicks, because you've got hair that's kind of going out. On the inside, same thing. Scribble, 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 but leave that edge nice and soft. Because hair comes out of the head. It's not like a toupee. It doesn't sit on there. Most everything else I can probably get with my cotton swab. Here's his chin. His chin is kind of dark right there in the, in the forefront. So I'm going to put that in there. But the rest of it's just going to get a little bit of value with my cotton swab. I have no idea what's going on in his hair, but I'm just trying to kind of follow the grain of it and just get the shapes of darkness because eventually I'm going to be blending this with my cotton swab. I'm going to do the core shadow in his cheek. Remember to leave yourself a little bit of space just on the side of the cheek. Because you've got reflected light in there. Just like we did the sphere. Now I'm going to pick up some of this charcoal from up here in his hair. And move it down into his cheek or his forehead, or wherever I need it. Once you get the face done, or, you know, close to being done, everything else can be kind of sketchy. All those flesh tones, all those light grays can be got with the cotton swab.
He's got some little smile lines in his eye. I use the, my cotton swab to get those little smile lines. Come out from his eye and you just kind of do this little line with your, your cotton swab. If I were to use my pencil, it would look kind of silly. The cotton swab is just nice and light. If you think you need it a little uh, sharper, you can take your kneaded eraser and just hit it just a little bit. And really, from here on out, this is this is kind of how you do that. You just little, a little of this, a little of that. The other good thing that uh, the cotton swab does is keeps your hand off of the page. Nobody wants to have that black on the side of their hand. So this way it keeps it up off the page, keeps it nice and clean. And we really haven't drawn a line around anything. If you need to, you could, but most of the time you don't need to. If you wanted to do something with his, his clothing, you could just come in with your cotton swab and do some little little textures for the clothing. Like over here on his sweater, you can just do that. Piece of cake. Good place for a signature is right off his chin there. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for being with me here today. Art makes life better.